How not to die on vacation, take one. <laughs> Hi guys, we are John and Miriam of John and Miriam's Travel Vlog. If you travel enough, you will experience illness or injury on your trip. It could be a minor inconvenience or it could be a showstopper. Today we're going to share some of the experiences we've had and how we have overcome them. And they actually turn out to be some pretty colorful stories in the process. And at the end, I want to tell you how I was left for dead during a raging blizzard in the shadow of the infamous Donner Pass in the High Sierras, but with a broken back. But spoiler alert, I survived. Obviously. So we wanted to tell you some of our stories so that you could perhaps learn from our mishaps. So John, why don't you kick it off? Well, they're all, they all have funny sides to this, any good story like that. Uh, several years ago, when Miriam's uh, daughter graduated from college, we were up in the Shenandoah Valley visiting uh, with her for the, and to be at the graduation. And we were staying at a bed and breakfast that had horses near and on the property so i'm out with my morning cup of coffee there's a horse up to the next to the fence i'm petting the horse it's a beautiful spring morning sipping my coffee you know and you normally you wipe the sleep out of your eyes and within minutes my eye swole completely shut inflamed it looked like something out of a horror movie um I didn't know whether to go to an urgent care and mess mess up the graduation ceremony or, or we wouldn't be there we wouldn't mess it up and so the only thing i figured we could do is pop some benadryl took a large mega dose of benadryl which controlled the swelling and it enabled uh us to attend the uh the festivities but i i really wasn't very festive benadryl has a sedative effect so my memory of the commencement ceremony when the governor of virginia gave the the talk i'm over here like this and miriam was constantly <laughs> nodding me and i'm going <laughs> with an eye, sunglasses and a ball cap and my eyes swollen shut so it was uh it makes for a great story but everything went off without a hitch but from that point on i tell people be care be careful of catching horse eye <laughs> and always carry benadryl the always. miracle drug yes Yes. So one year we decided to go to Savannah to celebrate uh, John's birthday in, in March. Um, and if you've ever been to Savannah, you know it's a beautiful city, particularly in the spring, and it's a great city to walk. Unfortunately, um, just after we arrived, my knee went completely out and I was in a lot of pain and no walking for me. And it was so bad, I, I couldn't sleep and I thought, geez, we've got to go to a medical facility. So um, our host, we were staying in an Airbnb, uh, she recommended an urgent care center. So we, we it was nearby, we, we got over there and and um, it was uh, took us a little bit of back because when we were going through check-in, the individual told us that this was a pay a la carte situation, that they did not file health insurance of any kind. So I'm like, oh, so it was, it was, it was just very different. I've, I've never had that experience before, but every time they uh, wanted to do a procedure or give me medication or inject prednisone or, or anything, they would tell me, well, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Bryant, you, uh, you're going to have to pay $50 for this. Do you want us to, to move forward? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> enough already. I'm going to pay the bill. Just go ahead and uh, take care of things. Um, so that was just very different. And I was really grateful that I have a medical reimbursable account set up with my employer. So they issue a little credit card and it's preloaded with the money that I have, uh, that I plan to contribute for the full year. So it was really easy to use that card and, and pay the, I think it was like $650 by the time we were finished with x-rays and, and all of the different things. But, um, just be, be prepared for unusual situations like that uh, when you're out of town. And it made for a very interesting trip trying to get in and out of the Uber. 
uh, <laughs> going to downtown and hobbling around uh, Savannah on crutches and, and a knee brace. And a knee and, brace. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of put, put a kind of damper on it, but it gave us a reason to sit and drink more beer. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, our next story. I have a personal thing. When, when I travel, I try to use a checklist to make sure I don't forget anything important. Well, one. Uh, actually, just a few years ago, we were taking Amtrak up to Philadelphia to spend some time with Miriam's son, and we were staying at an Airbnb up there. And as soon as we arrived, Miriam realized she had left her entire toiletry kit at home. We had to make a trip to the uh, CVS pharmacy. Miriam forgot her shaving kit, her toilet kit, and then I chastised her for not being properly prepared to pack for a trip. And then we get off the train, we get to our accommodations, and I realized I left mine on the train. So, $90, $90 worth of resupply plus for our, $36 for plus $36 for a refill of prescription. Uh, expensive lesson learned. Yeah, and, and it, we found that it wasn't so difficult to transfer the prescription. You know, I have a medication I need to take every day. So it just took a couple of phone calls to the pharmacy that I use here at home uh, so that they could transfer the, the prescription to Philly. And then when I got home, I had to call again to get it transferred back. So it wasn't, wasn't difficult. Uh, I think the lesson learned was always have extra cash for when things happen like that. Things will go wrong. Yeah, that's a given, so you have to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. So last year in May, it was just after John had purchased our spider, uh, I had a business trip. And we, about a week earlier, had taken our first, uh, well, it, it wasn't a long trip, but it was a day trip. I guess we spent about six hours total on the bike, and it was a sunny day. So I thought I had a little bit of sunburn on my, my neck, and I wasn't too worried about it. I, I um, packed for my trip and, and off I went to Miami. And I was meeting with uh, people I had never worked with before and I had to wear uh, business attire. I had to wear business suits. And I'm realizing after I've arrived that not only is this not sunburn on my neck, but I was very uncomfortable. It um, was itchy and I'm thinking, oh no, I'm having an allergic reaction and I was so afraid that it would spread to my face and here I am with these people I've never worked for before and I'm, I'm gonna, you know, my face is gonna be a red balloon. So I, I wasn't sure what to do and then I remembered that our health insurance includes what they call MD Live and what it is, it's an online uh, doctor service for certain, you know, more minor medical conditions and it's cheaper than, than going to um, a doctor's office. So I was able to photograph the rash on my neck and upload it to my computer and, and send it to uh, MD Live. And within an hour, a doctor was on the phone with me and had diagnosed what uh, my rash was and prescribed an ointment to, to help. And it was great. It was uh, almost immediate relief once I was able to fill the prescription nearby. So, um, you know, check into those things. Make sure that, that you have a plan to use health, health insurance when you're out of town because I could have gone to a doctor's office, but I, I couldn't leave my meeting and I wasn't sure where a doctor's office is located. And actually our out of network coverage uh, would have been minimal. So I would have had to pay a lot more for that very simple consultation, which you know, really, I just needed the prescription to, to uh, take care of it, so. Now, on to the big story. <laughs> a few years ago, we uh, went out to the Lake Tahoe area to the ski resort in the wintertime. Miriam's son had had a job, uh, a part-time job teaching uh, skiing and snowboarding. Sn snowboarding. In that, snowboarding that part of the country. Uh, we were out there in Lake Tahoe. We were taking a... a Cross-country skiing. Cross-country skiing lesson. I had downhill skied a lot uh, as a younger guy and had my share of falls. Loved it. But on this particular day, uh, Lake Tahoe was pretty high in altitude. It's about 6,000 feet. The air is kind of thin, kind of dry, kind of cold. And a snowstorm was scheduled to come in that afternoon. It's okay. We were at a ski resort. We didn't care. So we were actually listening to the instructor after about an hour's worth of 
of lessons and we were a little tired and I think that probably contributed to the accident. So while standing completely still, I just fell over and I really thought I'd I knocked the wind out of myself pretty hard. I had to lay there for a few moments, got myself up, shook it off, and continued the the, the lesson for a few more minutes. I said, you know, I think I'm done. Uh, so we the lesson was over. Mark and uh, Miriam decided we're, to ski on back. Well, we we were just getting the hang of it, and it finally uh, getting in the groove. So we we wanted to uh, to enjoy ourselves a little bit. My back had felt like it had a knot in its spine in the spinal cord, and I said, I, I'm, I'm exhausted, my back hurts, uh, I'm done. I just took the key, skis off, threw them over my shoulder, and began the walk back. It was about a mile uh, down the trail to the, uh, to the center where the ski center. The instructor came back, offered me a granola bar, didn't offer to give me a ride, and said, Well, you're not going to need your skis anymore, I'll have those. <laughs> so I'm walking through. The, the snow, it's already, and it's already started to snow, real, real heavy. And my back was killing me. Being a, a, a humorous storyteller, I thought, this is a great time to come up with a better line that I just fell over while I was skiing and hurt my back. And I realized that we were within a mile or two of the infamous Donner Pass, where a wagon train party had the winter over during an unexpected early winter and had to eat the dead to to stay alive. I was, this is going to be a great story. They left me for dead in the shadow of Donner Pass, and I had to push and hike my way out. Well, we did, and we ended up going down to the pub and having a nice meal and some cold beer. It was great. Uh, the next day, my back really tensed up, and it was absolute agony. Miriam had to go on to Phoenix, <laughs> Phoenix, yes, for one of her business meetings, and I flew on back home. Waited through the night and next morning I went to see my doctor and I said my back is absolutely killing me and He's looking at my back and goes well a fractured spine will do that And I had a hairline fracture in the lip of my spine Which was a compression fracture which you can get when you fall and it was excruciating for a couple of days Healed up fine makes for a great story and we won't be skiing anytime soon You know I think my skiing <laughs> days are done well, we hope that you've enjoyed hearing our stories and, and maybe picked up a tip or two. We'd love to hear your stories and, and hope you'll share them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.